Hello? Was it a match? 98%. Perfect. I wanted to make sure the package was on its way. It's as good as there. Haley Hensel. Uh, yes. Thumb scan, please. Thumb scan? Well, it's something new that we're doing. Well, I'm sorry. I'll have to get that fixed. Have a nice day. really cool. Can we try it? Yeah. Yeah, why not? You want to see it, Kaylee? No, I actually need to work on my project right now, and the interview starts in just a few minutes. Let's go get the computer and check this out. All right. Hey. Hey, Kyle. It's Kaylee. Oh, hi. Yeah, I just wanted to remind you to watch the Toll interview. It's streaming live in about a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm out with friends right now. Oh, well, you are coming over tomorrow to work on our project, right? Um, 9 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock sharp, Kyle. Okay. So, um, yeah, I need to get back to this interview here. It's starting it, and um, at least one of us needs to be working on our project. Alright, alright, that's cool. Yeah. Dr. Toll, according to your recent paper published in the Journal of Innovative Biotechnology, you have discovered something like the fountain of youth. Well, we're not there yet. Uh, we're almost there. The last thing that remains is the final sequence. So basically, if I understand this correctly, if this research works out, we'll all be immortal? We believe that we've discovered a technology that can end all human disease. I know that sounds incredible, but it's really quite simple. We have used something called the Finch Principle to develop a technology called ATOM, or Advanced Deoxyribonucleic Acid Modeling. And with that technology, we Excuse can... Excuse me, yes. if you don't mind me breaking in, could you explain for the rest of us more about the Finch Principle and the ATOM? I would be glad to. I think that we have a visual. Could we go to the visual? The Finch Principle essentially restates what Darwin hypothesized many years ago, but goes further by stating that ancient DNA resisted changes that were detrimental to the species by using a prototypical template strand that seems to be missing from modern DNA structure. ATOM is a method that allows us to reconstruct that prototype DNA strand. And as you can see, uh, the third strand intercalates the DNA, or it integrates directly into its structure, and that's how it does its work, in a, in a nutshell. But what does this mean? How will this cure disease? Well, that third strand that you saw acts sort of like a guardian angel to protect your DNA, so as long as that sequence is in place, nothing can really harm you. That's incredible. But what about damage that has already been done? What if someone's already sick? Now that's the really exciting part of this technology because not only does it protect your DNA, but it can actually restore it back to the way that it was originally. Well, this is very interesting, Dr. Toll. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. Toll. Uh, I really no, appreciate it was, your it was time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, Kaylee, can you come look at this for a minute? Kaylee, please. What's the problem, Vic? Okay, just give me a second. Here. All right, what? 
Well, there's no book or anything except for these instructions on the back of the box. And we've done everything right, I think. It says calibrating. Uh, maybe it just has to set some stuff up or something. But the thing is, it said that for the last couple minutes. It just Yeah, and it won't let us restart it or anything. Let us do anything. Well, I don't really. Oh, and before I forget, Mom left some food for us in the fridge and some money on the counter for the weekend. Wait, she left already? Yeah, she called while you were in your bedroom. Mom also said Amy can stay with us for the yeah. weekend. It's okay with her mom. Because she says you were responsible. <laughs> hey! <laughs> now that's okay with me as long as. People stay out of my way, no one will get hurt. <laughs> okay, okay guys, let's go eat something. But what about the game? Let's just leave it and see if anything but happens when we get back. Kyle's coming over tomorrow, maybe he can help you out with it. Yeah. All right. Lighten up. Lighten up. We're supposed to be working on our project, and you're like three hours late. Sorry about that, but you know, there's more to life than just genetics. Like what? Like everything else. Come on, it's a nice day. It's beautiful outside because we're playing soccer or something like that. Like we used to before. Before what? I know you don't like talking about it, but. Ever since your brother, well, passed away, you've been kind of weird. Like, for instance, you've been obsessed with this genetic stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't solve all the world's problems by putting your nose in these books. No, I can't. But this guy might. Okay, who are you talking about? You've been following the news at all about what they've discovered at Toll Institute. Kind of, I mean... Okay. Toll says that there is a third DNA strand that can protect your DNA from damage. Not only that, but it can fix it. So that means that you'll never get sick, and if you are sick, it will cure you. So you're saying they found, like, a uh, fountain of youth? Uh, well, more like the mythical tree of life. You know that tree in the garden that could have kept Adam and Eve alive forever or something like that? Yeah, Kaylee. The teacher at Bible Club says that that's not a myth. Okay, Vic, uh, you can believe whatever you want to, but science has disproved those fairy tales a long time ago. Right, Kyle? Well, I mean, <laughs> they're kind of interesting. I mean... Kyle, you're not helping, okay? What do you guys want anyway? We came here to recruit Kyle to help us. Oh, the game. Right. Okay, more. Well, uh, that can wait. Game? We're trying to work on our project right now. So we need to do well, that. We got this package in um, the mail, and we don't. So have we this need to be from, working on our really project cool because so we stuck it this in is going to be new soon. Collaborating, calibrating, and calibrating. Yeah. Okay, just okay. go play the game. I'll just stay here and work on our project. I'll be right back. No problem. Okay. Um, just Julie, stay here. Why don't you come too? We can use your help too. Yeah, come on. Okay. Let's just all go waste time together. No How good is time if you can't waste it anyway? So what do we know about these kids? Well, you got a pretty good crew there. Most of them seem like some pretty smart kids. Hmm. Yeah, this Kyle kid, he seems like he could have some potential. Top of his class. Looks like he wants to be a lawyer. But this girl, and she's the one that I'm really interested in. Yep, completely obsessed with genetics, and no doubt my work, of course. And she was definitely a match. Oh yeah, definitely. And you got it confirmed. Confirmed on the thumb scan. Good. Oh, wait, who are these? They were both at the house when the package was delivered. So we ran Bee Gees on them too. That's Kylie's sister. Seems to be have gotten into 
that Jesus religion a, a couple years ago at a Bible club or something. She idolizes her her sister. They're really close. Hmm. And this one? That's Amy Weber, Vicky's friend. Don't have much on her, as you can see. Well, I'm not too sure about these young ones, but, uh, well, a close relationship with her sister could be useful, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, let me know if there are any developments. Time is of the essence. Oh, you got it, boss. You have been selected to be part of an elite special force. Your mission, track down and capture the elusive mastermind of international terror, Edward Fincher. At your disposal are all of the U.S. government's most secret technologies, including enhanced satellite imaging and advanced personal identification systems. Your first task, discover the fugitive's identity by unraveling the first riddle. Each step of the way, you will encounter new clues and new challenges. The game is afoot. Beware. Government agents will soon be on your trail, and your life could be in danger. Good luck. See what I mean? Um, so what are we even supposed to do? I... Well, apparently we're supposed to find some guy named Edward Fincher. But it did stop doing that calibrating thing. Did you uh, try uh, typing it in? Anything in? I tried typing everything in and it won't take anything. Yeah, and it does this weird scanning thing, see? When I click the button. Let me try. I just pushed the button. Well, whatever you did, you unlocked it. Cool. Yeah, but there aren't any other instructions. So I, I, I think don't... we're supposed to find this guy, Edward Fincher. Hmm. Let me make a quick phone call. Don't mess up with anything, all right? Um, in the call. What is that? What? That noise. I think it's the phone. I didn't think we gave that number out to anyone. Hello? Hey dude, this is Kyle. Yeah man, what's going on? <clears throat> um, I'm not sure. Listen, I just sent you a bunch of stuff. Can you check it out? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, what is this? Uh, it's a game uh, the Hensel girls have just started playing, but we can't figure it out. Yeah, dude, this stuff is definitely messed up. Uh, Trace Zero, that sounds really familiar. It definitely looks ARG to me. ARG, are you serious? Apparently we're supposed to be hunting some guy by the name of Edward Fincher. You think he's real? Fincher, Fincher. Why does that name sound so familiar? Let's see what we can find on a guy named Edward Fincher. I'll check the ARG database. Uh, nothing on Fincher yet, but Trace Zero comes up. It's an older ARG, uh, mid-90s. Um, apparently some kind of manhunt thing, spy sats, stuff like that. Okay, so, uh, what's next? Well, down the rabbit hole. That is, if the rabbit hole is still there. Hey, do something. Uh, looks like somebody made a video about it. Uh, same title as the game, Trace Zero. Uh, hey, what do you know? Uh, video Kingdom has it? You should try and get a hold of it, and we'll do some more research. Just give us a couple hours. What do you think, man? Game on, man.
Alright guys, listen up. Uh, we think this might be an alternate reality game. Hey, what did I tell you about that? Stop playing around. What's an alternate reality game? Um, Who's we? It, my friends, the ones who I was just calling. <laughs> Your nerd friend? Shut up. Now listen. <laughs> listen, okay? An alternate reality game is not just played on the computer, it's played in real life as well. And often, time is a crucial factor. So listen up. Yes, sir. Okay, explain that. I will, but I want to get this started first. Um, the guys think that this DVD is a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole? Oh, never mind. Um, there was an AR, old ARG called Trace Zero that made back in the mid-90s, and uh, someone made a movie about it. Can you and Amy go to the Video Kingdom and rent it? It's called Trace Zero, just like the game. Here's the money. Um, why? Well, just do it! I'll explain when you get back. Okay, so what's up with you? Why are you into this all of a sudden? I just think ARGs are cool. Come on. Aren't you intrigued? You know what? We really need to get back to our project right now. That's what we should be working on. Oh, come on. That can wait. Let's just try to check this out. Hey boss, we got them in sight. They're just right over here. What do you want me to do? All right, you got it. I I talked to Kayla and she said just to bring the video home. So I, I told her about the uh -huh. number, and she didn't know what it meant. Uh-huh. Um, Nick, I think those guys in that car over there are watching us. Maybe we should go this way. Yeah. Oh, what did she say? Well, there's something wrong with the tape, but they're bringing it home. They also, they also found this number with, uh, on a piece of paper inside the tape casing. Well, let me see it. <laughs> girls, girls, we just want to talk. It'll be okay. No, no, yeah, come no, with us. No, 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 no. That's me. How did I, how did I get on here? How'd they get my picture on here? Um, I don't know. We can get well, these. Well, what's this? The sand, if you can get that off of Google. So. 
so. Wait, wait, this is different. Yeah. What? Whoa, did you see that? The like, speed is gonna... life. That's impossible. The only people who have this kind of technology are the... Are the government. Kyle, I don't think this is a game. What are you saying? I can't explain it. I've just got a really bad feeling about this. Okay. What do you mean? Okay, see that little icon? Yeah. Little tree icon? I think I've seen it before, I just don't know where. That doesn't help us, we need to find out. I don't out. remember where it was. I just, I where don't know. Where have you seen it before? I don't know. Be calm. Hey, this is Vicky. Just leave a message after the Gotta go. Gotta go now. Let's go. Hurry up. Gotta get out of here. I don't know. I think so. Who are those guys? I have no idea and I don't want to find out. Big guns. Guns! What'd you get us into? Me! You're the one who wanted to play this stupid game. This is your game. I... This isn't going to get us anywhere. We need to find an internet connection and a place to regroup. Where are you going to find that? I know where we can go. Wait, where are you going? Wait! Found him. Well, what took you so long? I sent you out over an hour ago. Ah. Uh, well, it was like 12 o'clock. I thought about a little bite of Oh, lunch. for crying out loud. Well, at least you brought the girls. Why don't you have a seat? Why don't you guys give us a few minutes? Wait outside the door. Okay. Now, I realize that this may seem very inconvenient to you right now, but I assure you, it's all necessary. You see, you two are helping me to find the location of the greatest hidden secret of all time. The secret of eternal life. I already know where to find that. And where would that be? In the Bible. What is it that you're referring to? Jesus said that anybody who believes in him will never die, but instead will have eternal life. Yes, Jesus. Believe in a man who uh, was crucified by Roman soldiers and you will live forever. But he came back to life. Vicky, is it? Listen, I have been studying the science of life and death for my entire career. And I can assure you that we are decades or even centuries away from developing a technology that could bring people back from the dead. No one has ever come back from the grave. You said you were looking for the secret to eternal life? Yes, but preventing death and reversing death are two completely different things. What? The tree of life. You're looking for the tree of life? <laughs> oh, we're not looking for it. We found it, in a manner of speaking. But, but I don't get this. If you've already found it, what are you looking for? Yes, yes, that's the real question now, isn't it? And this has been very diverting, but I really must get back to my work. Vinny, Tom. Yeah? Why don't you two guys take these young ladies down to the holding s the lounge and make them comfortable <laughs> there. Sounds good. All right, come on. Go. You like the lounge. It's a nice place. Okay, that should work. I've patched us into the sat link and we should have full access in about five minutes. How'd you do that? I've got other tricks up my sleeve too. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. My dad was kind of a computer geek. He taught me all sorts of stuff. Oh yeah, you're 
You didn't really talk about your father much. I mean, you don't have to talk about it now if you don't want to. No. It's okay. I just don't know very much. I just remember when my brother was really sick, how my dad changed. You know, it used to be a lot of fun. We did all kinds of stuff together, and he taught me all sorts of stuff. But when Ben got sick, all that changed. He just spent all his time at work, and when he wasn't at work, he was drunk. And then Ben died, and he left Mom to take care of me and Vic. And we haven't seen him since. Hey, I'm really sorry. I didn't know all that. <laughs> it's not your fault. What kind of work did your dad do anyway? Uh, he was some kind of consultant for the government, I think. He didn't really talk about it, because I don't think he was really allowed to. Oh, hey, we're in. Now we listen, we probably don't have much time, so we need to work fast. Whoever those goons were that were following us, they're probably monitoring the system. Which means? Which means they'll be here soon. Okay, look, it's that logo with a message blinking next to it. Why don't you try clicking on it? Time is short. Agents on your trail. We have your sister and her friend. Find Fincher in 24 hours and we'll release them. Fail and transmit Fincher's location via the secure link. More instructions to follow. Fail. Fail in what? What are we going to do, Kyle? That's that's my sister. I can't lose her too. I know where I've seen that little logo before. What? Where? I really don't know. Can you get your hands loose? I could try, but those guys tied them pretty tight. I wonder what's gonna happen to us. I, I don't know, but I'm scared. Do you think they're gonna kill us? I'm, I'm a little scared too, but, but I'm not scared to die. What do you mean you're not scared to die? Everyone's afraid of dying. Do you remember last year when we went to the Bible Club with Mrs. Varney? Uh, yeah. Well, do you remember when she said that we're all sinners and going to hell, but Jesus Christ came and, and died on a cross and for our sins? And if we ask him to save us, then he will? Um, yeah, but what's your point? Well, I believe it, and I did ask him, so now I know where I'm going to go if I die. Um, okay, Vic, that's, that's good for you and all, but can we stop talking about this fairy tale stuff and try getting our hands untied? Maybe if I... Are, are you free yet? Yeah, I got it. Uh, do you think you could, um... Yeah. Help me. Alright, there you go. Oh, I got it. Thanks. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I got yours. Here, wait. That's mine. Here. Okay. Wait up. Why are we here? Someone at Toll Institute is looking for Edward Fincher. I want to talk to Professor Lawson. He might know something about Toll Institute that could help us find Fincher. Why, yes, I've read all of his research. Fascinating. Have you ever heard of someone named Edward Fincher? Fincher? Well, of course I have. But I haven't heard his name mentioned for several years. Fincher worked for Toll for about 10 years. Then he was caught apparently falsifying data. Toll fired him. And then he disappeared. Funny, though. I met Fincher a couple of times. 
seemed like a real up and up kind of guy. And we discussed the Finch Principle at length. The Finch Principle? Fincher wrote that? Yes, Fincher was responsible for designing and developing the initial ADAM prototype for Toll. The whole system relied on the Finch Principle. But what exactly is the Finch Principle? Fincher hypothesized that any sample of DNA could be traced back to its original prototype DNA through a simple computer algorithm. At first, the computer algorithm failed miserably. In fact, it didn't work at all. What was the problem? The triple helix. I thought it was a double helix. If we go far enough back in time, DNA was a triple helix. Yes, in fact, if you look at the modern structure of the DNA, you can see that there's room in the DNA for a third strand. Now that is why Kaylee has an A in my class. After Fincher corrected his algorithm to account for the triple helical structure, the program ran flawlessly. But apparently, they still didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle figured out. So what did they do? They had developed a DNA strand that would intercalate the human DNA but they were not able to develop the algorithm to put the DNA in its proper sequence. And without that, the strand was useless. So couldn't he just uh, try every combination until he found the correct one? Oh my boy, you must really start paying attention in class. Oh, uh, that would take like 14 million years to try all of those combinations. Exactly. He needed the sequence and for a short time, it seemed that Toll was on the verge of deciphering it. And then? And then Toll fired Fincher. It did not seem like a, right, a smart move at the time. It still doesn't, in fact. Because without Fincher to run the system and to debug it, that goal of finding the tree of life was all but lost. But didn't Toll just announce some kind of breakthrough? Well, yes. Yes, he did. Apparently, he found a way of creating the proper sequence without Fincher's help, which is very exciting. Very exciting. Hmm. In some strange way, this is all starting to make sense. Huh? I'll explain it to you later. So why all of a sudden interest in the Toll Institute and Fincher? Is this part of your project? Um, well, actually... Uh, yes, yes it is. And you've been extremely helpful, but we've got to get going now. Well, come back any time. You know how I'd love to talk <laughs> science. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. But what we haven't even talked about... Um... Oh, uh, yeah, uh, th thank you, Dr. Moss. All right, take care now. Well, that settles it. There's no way out. We're stuck. Yeah. I think you're right. Well, there's nothing we can do here other than just sit and wait. Well, there is one thing we could do. And what's that? We could pray. Oh, yeah, like that's gonna help. They have guns, you know. I know. But there's a story in the Bible about a guy named Peter who was in prison. And a bunch of people, a bunch of people prayed for him, and God sent an angel to get him out. Right, and then the angel flapped his wings and they flew right out the window? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a window in here. Well, actually, his chains fell off and he walked right through the gate. <laughs> How convenient. Well, you can believe those fairy tale stories if you'd like, but you could also just face the facts that we're doomed. I'm going to try it anyway. Hey, be my guest. I'm just going to sit here and play count the ceiling tiles. One, two, three. Wait! Four. I didn't, I can't believe I didn't think of that before. Oh, thank you, Lord. What are you talking about? Come on. I got an idea. Hey, I'm not so sure this is such a great idea coming here. Well, you couldn't get them on the phone, and maybe they can help us figure out all this technical stuff. I mean, these government tracking programs are beyond my scope of knowledge. But I think they're the only tools we have to find Fincher. 
Whoa. Uh, Brad? Jake? Uh, wait a minute, Kyle. Is anyone down there? I think it's Jake and Brad. What took you guys so long? What happened around here? You tell us what kind of trouble are you all mixed up in. And those guys really meant business. You mean the guys in the suits? The suits? I don't think they even know what a suit is. They're just a couple of goons. And they said they would come back and finish the job if we didn't alert them to any new information. Like us being here? Mm. This just gets better and better. Yeah, we told them we didn't know anything, we didn't have anything, but they still wrecked the place anyway. Kind of looks the same to me. Listen, we're being followed by some kind of government agents, and they could be here any minute, so we need to get going. I don't know. Come on, man. What's better, the goons or the feds? Good point. All right, I know a great place. Let's go. Okay, now you see this over here? This ties into the SAT tracker software somehow. It's uh, some kind of uh, encryption decoder or something. Yeah, I've seen something like this before. Well, my dad used to work on this encryption stuff, but this just looks different. Wait, I thought you said your dad didn't talk about his work much. Well, he didn't, but that didn't keep me from poking around. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me see something. Kyle, can I see that DVD? Yeah, I got it right here. Let me see it. How did you do that? My dad used to send me secret messages when he was away on business and stuff. It was just something that he used to do. To unlock the message, I had to stick the CD in upside down and the unlock code was encoded on the label side. Hey, what are those dots? I think they're locations. Click on one. Wait a minute. Hey, that's... Yeah, it's a location. Uh, Kaylee, drag that to the sat link. Well, that's strange. I think that's us. Click on another one. That's Toll Institute. Look, see the freeway, and here's Route 9. Tell them what we found out about Fincher. Well, we found that uh, Fincher used to work for Toll Institute about 10 years ago. Yes, we know. He was found falsifying data, so Toll fired him. That's what all the papers said, but our sources said otherwise. You see, Fincher was working on a really high-profile project called ADAM, which stands for Advanced Deoxy... Yes, we know. But did you know it's actually a smokescreen for something called Sequence? Some kind of secret government project, uh, Defense Department, I think. Military! That makes complete sense. Can you imagine immortal soldiers? That's impossible. Whether it is or isn't doesn't really make a difference. It explains a lot. So what happened to Fincher? Well, apparently, uh, Sequence was involved in some shady stuff. Like clandestine human testing? All oh, hush hush. Somewhere along the line, Fincher and Toll had a falling out, and Fincher threatened to blow the whistle. Then Fincher disappeared. And Toll leaked the story to the press that Fincher had cooked the data and that he got fired. It made sense to everyone. After Fincher disappeared, the Adam Project was officially put on hold. But according to our sources, Toll was still working on it. But without Fincher... He couldn't figure it out. Which is why... He's looking for Fincher now. What I don't understand, though, is why Toll is forcing us to look for Fincher. I mean, why isn't he just searching for him himself? I don't know either. But my guess is that this last red dot is the location of Edward Fincher. Yes, that's where we need to go. Hey, we're coming with you. I, I think it'd be best if we just split up. Yeah, I think Kayla's right on this. I mean, we should do this alone. We'll call you if we find out anything. No argument for me. All right, let's go. Girl, 
girls, check out time! <laughs> oh, shoot. Where are they? They're not in here. We better find them. I mean, I don't want to have to tell Cole that. I lost them. I'm not telling that man. I ain't Let's telling go. him. Let's go find them. These guys sure are stupid. Yeah, but listen, we're not out yet. I thought you had them secured. We did. They were there, tied up. One that we came back to check on, make the rounds. They're gone. Yeah, boss. It was like they just vanished. Listen, we are running out of time. I don't have to tell you that your lives depend on this as much as mine. So find them! We will. Boss, you can count on us. You can count hey, on hey, us, Go boss. do it! Fitcher's house should be somewhere around here. It should be up this hill. Alright, we'll find him in the morning. Come Hate on. the woods. <sighs> Close. Yeah. Oh, look. There's a barn. Come on. We should pray. I mean, I know you think it's silly, I, I, but I think I think I'm okay with it now. All right, let's pray. Lord, you know that we're really scared, but we know that you are in control. Lord, please help Kyle and Kaylee to be safe from toll. There, he'll be fine now. He lost some blood, and he'll be hurting for a while, but, but he'll be fine. Boy, it was very fortunate that you found me when you did. Could have been much worse. Are, are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Okay, well, now what did you say your name was? Well, I happened to introduce myself, but I'm Kaylee, and that's Kyle. Okay, well, nice to meet you, Kaylee. 
I guess I will introduce myself to your friend Kyle when he wakes up. Uh, That'll probably be in a couple hours from now. I don't think we have that much time, Dr. Fincher. Well, now how do you know my name? You see, we got this game. A and, game? Well, that's what we thought it was. But it turns out that... Anyway, we found ourselves in the middle of some kind of manhunt. A manhunt? Well, for you, actually. And we've been tracking you with all kinds of government tracking stuff, and these men with guns came to our house, and they've been following us, and then somebody kidnapped my sister and her friend, and they told us that we have 24 hours to find you and tell them where you are, or they'll, get, they'll kill the girls. Told. How many hours more do we have? About 18. Well, why don't you just get some rest now? Your friend is going to be resting for a few hours. But There's, he'll, he'll be fine. You'll be absolutely safe here. By the way, do you, what is your last name? It's Hensel. Kaylee Hensel. Hensel. Um, we'll, we'll talk later. What, you just get some rest. Yes, Mr. Secretary, I can confirm that sequence is almost complete. I should have a full report to you no later than 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Hurdles? Uh, no, sir, no hurdles. Just some technical, minor technical difficulties that we're currently working out as we speak. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Have a good night. driving out to pick up the equipment. I should be back by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning at the location. Any word on those kids? Oh, so help me if you don't have those kids back in your custody by morning. No, especially that Kaylee girl. Yeah, she's a really important piece of the puzzle. Without her, it's over. Somewhere safe. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Better than last night. Well, let me let me get some breakfast, and then we can talk. Is that Doctor Fincher? Yeah. He fixed your leg. It's like all the praying worked. No, Kyle. We were just lucky. Really lucky. Why do you like that? Listen, Kyla, you shouldn't know just as well as anyone else that there is no God. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, if there is a God, Kyle, he certainly doesn't care one little bit about us. All right. Well, it's not exactly IHOP, but I trust it'll do. Before you eat, I would like to just give thanks to God and for your safety of being here. Father, we thank you for these two young people here. So we ask that you would keep Kaylee's sister and her friends safe. We thank you for this food. And we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Thank you for being so kind, Dr. Fincher. We really don't know what to say. It's the least that I could do. Your father was a very good friend of mine. My father? You knew my father? We used to work together. In fact, I have a picture.
We used to work together. For toll. <laughs> Dude, it's like 9, 5 o'clock in the morning. Hey, look, how do you know this is where the boss wants us to set the stuff up at? Because he's at the barn. But I don't mean like, how do you know it's this barn? Dude, what other barn have we ever used? This one we always use, man. Come on. Hey, I still don't understand. Like, when he called the hunt off for those girls, I mean, like, last night he was so upset with us. And this morning he calls and he's like, forget the girls. What's up with that? Dude, we already talked about this on the way over here, don't you remember? He thinks he's found Fincher and the girl. Those are the ones he really needs. So, why did he need the other girl? Dude, I told you, the, the girl, she's just a friend. She's just supposed to help lead us to the one that he really needed. Ah, oh, that's it, man. Okay. I don't understand. I mean, we know about Adam and Sequence, but why does Toll need you now? And why is he using us to find you instead of finding you himself? Yeah, I, I can see that there's a lot to explain here. Let me show you a lab notebook that Dr. Toll, myself, and your father kept at the Toll Institute. You'll need to think back to your Sunday school days and remember the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden. After God planted the garden and created Adam and Eve, he told them that they could eat from all of the trees of the garden, except for one, a tree that he placed in the center of the garden called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He told them that if they ate the fruit from that tree, they would die. And so the man and woman lived happily in the garden until a serpent who had the ability to speak tricked Eve into eating the fruit, and she gave it to Adam, and he ate. And at that point, Adam and Eve died. Spiritually, the soul that God had breathed into Adam, which was originally connected to God, was suddenly cut off, disconnected from God. You see, something happened at the molecular level when they ate this fruit. The fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil contained an exact opposite template strand to the third strand in original human DNA. It attached to the third protector strand and then destroyed it, making the organism susceptible to disease and death. But that's not where the story ends. You see, there was also another tree in the garden called the Tree of Life. When God ejects Adam and Eve from the garden, he puts an angel with a flaming sword to protect the tree. Then God said, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So essentially it is like this. The first tree destroys the third DNA strand and the second tree restores it. Or to think of it another way, the first tree brings death while the second tree brings eternal life. But what you're talking about is a myth. None of that even happened. You can't even prove that Adam and Eve even existed. No, I can't, I can't prove it. But I believe it to be true. Well, believing it doesn't make it true, sir. Darwin's theory proved that we got here through evolution. Darwin's theory did not prove that, Kaylee. Living things have offspring after their kind, meaning that their offspring are similar, but not identical to the parents. This is what Darwin described as evolution, which he defined as just change over time. There is no contradiction in the Bible to that concept. What about the, that bird guy? Bench, er, I thought he was like hiding somewhere. Bro, you really gotta start paying attention. When he called us last night, yeah. he said, I found Bench. Hit me at 6 o'clock in the morning. Don't you remember? He's already found it, man. That's why I gotta get the stuff set up. You need to shut up and get back to work, oh, dude. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Dude, look. 
all your talking has been being late. We don't have hardly any time left. We gotta get the stuff set up. Hey, do you <sighs> have breakfast when we get there? Sweetie BP donuts. Dude, get your head in the game, man. We gotta get. Uh, look what you made me do. Look. Two black puts up one black, one red. This is simple, man. Hey, it's simple. No, you can have the jelly. I I really like the cream filling, though. You know, I wish you'd stop thinking about breakfast right now because we're gonna get in so much trouble if we don't get this stupid thing set up and then we get back. What? I, I think he's brought donuts for us. Okay, I'm sure he has. He's probably so proud he of us. For everything we do is great, doesn't he? Shut up, man. Yeah. Turn that box over. We gotta finish oh. this. Like that? I doubt, yeah, like that. I doubt he's done for What do you want? I don't know because you keep talking, I can't think. Put those stupid things on. I'll do this. That is work. crazy. I don't know how he wanted all this. There's dumb like three stuff. leads. I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. That's why I brought you here, man. You're supposed to be able to figure that kind of stuff out. I think it's a bad idea, right? Okay. Do you think it can connect all together with the little stair step? No, dude. Oh, I thought I had it bad. Dude, that's totally wrong. Look. Man, what are you going to do? You're going to kill somebody. So what you're saying is that Toll found this tree of life. Actually, he found the other tree. So, if they got the fruit and isolated the complement RNA strand, you could simply flip it and he'd have what the you could... The third DNA strand. Precisely. And now he needs the sequence of the strand. Precisely. He needs an enzyme that cuts the strand into multiple pieces and then recombines it to form the active strand. Huh? Early humans all had the gene to produce the active enzyme but it has since been mutated so many times that it no longer produces a viable enzyme. Tal had a theory that there were some people who still had the working enzyme. All we had to do was find them. I just don't get it. What? I mean, you're a scientist. How can you believe in all of this God stuff? You still don't believe it? Even after I told you about the tree? I'm still not convinced about the tree, but even if I was, that doesn't prove that God exists. No, I can appreciate that you could say that. That it doesn't prove it. But, you know, people want charts and graphs and scientific data to to show and prove that things exist. But, but that's not the way God operates. Then how does he operate? Faith. Now that's a cop out if I ever heard one. I can understand you would say that. Well, take for example this table. Does it exist? Yes. How do you know? I can see it and I can touch it. And where's your proof? That is my proof. I can see it and I can touch it. It's there. That's what I'm talking about. What? Faith. Faith? What are you talking about? You have a lot more faith than you realize. Every day you put faith in your senses that they will provide an accurate picture of the world. You have faith in them and in the things you see in front of you without ever asking for proof. If you asked someone to prove that the table existed, they would be able to give you some evidence, but they'd never be able to prove it. Faith in God is the same thing, really. It's all right in front of you. I don't think it's that easy. I can't believe in God. I don't want to believe in God. It's interesting that you said that. There's a verse in the Bible that says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. So what's that supposed to mean? Well, notice that it's in the heart, and not the mind, where the decision is made not to believe. People don't believe because they don't want to believe. It's not that they can't. It's really as simple as that. Tell me how I'm supposed to believe in a God that lets so many bad things happen. 
How can I believe in a God that would let my little brother die and let my dad leave and ruin our family? It doesn't make any sense. If he's God, why doesn't he just make everything perfect? Kelly, he does make everything perfect. It was sin that destroyed everything. So we're all being punished for some guy that ate an apple thousands of years ago. I'm supposed to believe that. No, Kaylee. The Bible says all have sinned. Do you know what? You sound like my little sister after she came home from Bible school. I don't want you to go to hell, she kept telling me, but now you're telling me that we're all going to hell because we've all sinned. I should have figured it was just a bunch of bad news. Well, that is the bad news. But there's good news. See, the bad news is that we, we're sinners and we are going to die. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins so that we don't have to die. Jesus Christ took upon himself our sin. And now we can go to be with him forever in eternity. That's the good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My little brother believed all this Jesus stuff. So because of that, you're saying that he'll come alive again one day. If he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he will have eternal life, yes. Okay, I just need some time to think about all this. Of course, but don't take too long. The Bible says now is the, the accepted day of salvation. Make your choice now. Kelly, come here. All right, Vicki. What? Vicki, are you okay? Gotta get out of there. We'll know that you're at Finchers house. He's coming to get you at six o'clock. Listen, I'll explain later, but right now you have to get out. They have some sort of equipment. Oh, Kaylee, you gotta get out of here. I have to go now. I'll be praying. They know we're here. What? They're coming. What are we going to do? Out of here, but first I need to give you something. Oh God, you're there. Now would be a really great time to show yourself. Okay, you're going to need to get out of here quickly. I have so many this, questions. This has the answers. But I, I don't mean questions about the Bible. I mean questions about Toll and about my father. Hey, 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 it's time to go, like now. Thank go out the back door. Go, quickly. Well, if it ain't the Finchmeister himself. Randall! I don't remember telling you to stand. Where's the girl? Girl? Oh, don't you play dumb with me, you double-crossing no good. Search the place. Let me have one of those first. Well, why didn't you just end it now, Toll? Oh, <laughs> you'd like that now, wouldn't you? Appease your conscience? Become the hero after all the things that you've done? Oh, no. I am so close now, I can taste it. And as soon as we find that Kaylee girl, we can party like it's 1990. You know what I mean. So start talking and tell me where she is. I, even if I even if I knew where she was, I wouldn't tell you. You were making such a big mistake, Fincher. You, of all people, should understand what it is that I'm trying to do. I am trying to bring the world eternal life. And all you brought into this world is death. <laughs> you are so small-minded. You always have been. As soon as I have the sequence, I will have the secret of eternal life. You still don't understand, do you, Tal? The only way to eternal life is Jesus Christ. Don't you ever use that name in my presence again. Or what? Oh, you know, I should just... Nothing. 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 
What in the? What is that? Is that cream cheese? Oh, for crying out loud. You, come with me, get Fincher. You, stay here and find her. You count me. Whoa, guys, oh. look. Hi. We didn't do anything. No, it wasn't us. It was Randall's hole and a couple of goons and someone's Relax, trying to kidnap no. my sister. What are you talking about? We're just trying to protect you. What? Huh? You guys are just chasing us. We're just trying to catch up with you. If you guys are here to protect us, you guys can give us a ride out of here. Right? We can do that. We need you to help me find my sister and her friend because Toll might have them somewhere. He doesn't. What do you mean? What are you talking about? They're in the car eating donuts. We found them in the ditch last night. Drop your guns, agents. Drop your guns. Or I'll air condition this little lady's brain. Oh, great, guys. Some great protection. Good job. Don't do anything, you'll regret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Don't worry. Matter of fact, boys, this is great. I get all four of the kids, two FBI agents, the boot. Why don't you go ahead and give me the keys to your car real quick? And it looks like it only holds four in the back. Gentlemen, you'll be riding in the trunk. Hey, what's up, boss? Yeah, of course. I've got the girls and the guys. We're all on the way. You know where. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Yeah, we're all right. Oh, we're until this doofus showed up. Shut up! Guys, it's gonna be okay. Because God's in control. How can you say that, Vic? Fincher almost had me believing that stuff in two, and you know what? This is totally out of control. Yeah, like, how's God gonna get us out of this one? Well, I don't know. But I believe he will. I don't know if I believe all this God stuff, but it sure was freaky weird. I mean, Vicky prayed, and then BAM! The FBI guy showed up. Too weird. Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. God in control. I'm telling you he's in control. Toll is. It only seems like he's in control. Well, you can just tell him that yourself when you see him. Hey, hey, shut up, shut up. I know how to drive. Shut up. Alright, come on. Sit him down here. Sit down. Well, all the guests have been invited, and now it's time to prepare our guest of honor. Who might that be? Well, you, of course, and we need that Kaylee girl, as you know. But you, you have the key that I need to unlock the sequence right up here. Without that, that girl is worthless. No one's worthless, Toll. Jesus Christ shed his blood for each and every person. I told you to never use that name in my presence again. And no one shed their blood for me, but you're going too soon if you don't start talking. I need that sequence. Toll, I told you before and I'm telling you again. I will never give you the information you're looking for. Oh, have it your way, but I think you'll see things differently soon. Have fun, but be quick about it. Vinny's gonna be here soon with those other kids, and I need that sequence. Right, boss. Oh, and Tom, just loosen him up a little bit. Don't kill him just yet. We need what's in his head. Got it? Got it, boss. You better get it. You're gonna be the one sitting there next. You got it? You ready for some fun? Hey, Vinny. Nice job. I knew I could count on you. You got it, boss. What have you done with Fencher, you monster? I haven't done anything with him, but I'm not sure what Tom's been doing to him in there. What? <laughs> what? <I'm down. laughs> Oh, all right, get out of the car. Come on. I love you. Come on, we don't have all day. Get out of the car. Follow him.
Any luck yet? Not really, boss. He, he just keeps mumbling something about only one way. Only one way. Oh, it'll never work. You know it. Oh, no? No, it has worked, and it will work, and all we have to do now is make it work for everyone. Wait a minute. Wh what will work? I don't understand. So let me clue you in. You see, you are a walking miracle. You are the last remaining hopeful that we had identified. Hopeful? Wh what are you talking about? Yes, hopefuls. You see, we knew that there were people in the general population, uh, most likely children, who produced a specific form of an enzyme. The sequence enzyme? Yes, the sequence enzyme. The Fincher here came up with a plan. He said, why not get blood samples from every child in the region, sequence them, see if they have potential to produce the enzyme. But how would you do that? The school vaccination. Yeah, sequencing took some time, but we identified 100 potential candidates. And the only thing that remained was to sequence them and find out if any of them produced the active enzyme. So, you know that enzyme couldn't be synthesized? That's a minor detail. How could you? An enzyme farm. Wow, I am impressed. And if the situation was different, I might offer you a job. But I need you for a different purpose because, you see, you turned out to be the real deal. I thought you said there were a hundred. Well, 99 of them didn't pan out. Didn't pan out? Tell them what you did! Tell them! What I did? Uh, don't you mean what their father did? Patrick. My father! Patrick didn't do it! Patrick was certainly a willing participant. That's because you lied. You told him no one would get hurt. Well, no one should have been permanently hurt. What are you talking about? Tell her, Toll. Tell her what you did to, your, to her brother. That was certainly an unforeseen and unfortunate consequence. What? We, we had to have a way of determining which of the 100 hopefuls produced the active enzyme. And uh, the only way to do that was with a sort of a, a test. To see if they'll get sick. We had a highly virulent form of influenza in order to test whether the potentials had the enzyme, we simply called back in the 100 potentials, gave them a booster shot with the influenza virus, and then we waited. I remember that. I got really sick, and so did Ben. But you never got sick, here. Yes, it worked very well. 99 out of the 100 hopefuls got sick, and one did not. Me. That's right, you. And most of the kids, including Vicky here, bounced right back, except for... Our brother. Well, unfortunately, your brother had a confounding pre-existing condition that you know, I just didn't know about before we started the study. You killed him! What does our father have to do with any of this? Well, besides the fact that he designed the entire system, he was also the first employee at Toll Institute to volunteer his children to be in this study. You know, your father was a great asset to this company before that unfortunate event with your brother, and after that, he just turned into a miserable drunk and... You did all this! You ruined our family! Your father loved you so much, he couldn't forgive himself. So, we decided to disappear off the scene and... Okay, okay, that's enough. We're wasting time. Fincher, the sequence now, please. Oh, I thought as much. And oh, we're gonna have to take this up a notch. I, I thought you said not to kill him. Oh, no, we don't have to work more. him over no. anymore. No. no! I thought being the humanitarian he is, this might change his mind. It's a noise. Go check that out. Keep your eyes and ears open. It's probably just some local wildlife. All right, Finchmeister, give me the sequence. I thought you already knew the sequence. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. You see, this joker here double-crossed me. He and your father with their encryption stuff. No, Fincher's the only one who knows the sequence. And without that, it could take me years or even decades to find it. I don't have that kind of time. I've got deadlines. I've got deadlines. So, Fincher, start talking or this little girl is going to meet your guy. Let her go! <laughs> you can't oh, do this. There enough blood on your hands? Oh, give it up, Fincher. That one little boy, would you let that go? What is that compared to bringing the world everlasting life? You don't care about eternal life. All you 
care right. about is yourself. All right, it is time, Fincher. Time is what you're going to get when you get busted for this. Not likely, since I'm in complete control of the situation. Like control. What did you say? You said when you seems like you're in control. You're under arrest for fraud and treason. Treason? What? We've been watching you for years. We know you've been trying to sell your technology to terrorists in the Middle East. Get Fincher. Let's take him into town for debriefing. But he hasn't done anything. He's been listed as a fugitive for years along with your father, but now that we have told, we get all this settled. You were willing to risk your life for us, Dr. Fincher. Thank you. You can thank me by reading that book. It tells about the man who died so that we can live. Wait. Tol, you'll have time to read this where you're going. What's this? It's the key. The what? The key to unlocking eternal life. you to forgive me. I need you to forgive me. So how are your hacker friends doing? Yeah, there's nerd friends in the house. <laughs> hey, they're not nerd friends, thank uh -huh. you very much. Okay. <laughs> By the way, they're doing perfectly fine. <laughs> doing a normal stuff. Hacking government files. <laughs> Anything new on Fincher? Yes, actually, Fincher's been cleared, so he should be out in just a couple of weeks. Have you seen your dad yet? Uh, I haven't talked to him, but Mom got a letter from him, and it sounds like he might be coming back soon. <laughs> That's great. Everything will be back to normal, right? Well. Things will never be back to normal. Yeah, I guess Tor really missed you guys when I was up. Yeah, you did. But you know what? I've been reading this Bible that Fincher gave me, and it seems like that no matter how many bad things a person has done, they can still be forgiven. Even someone like Tor. That's right, Leon. And God want, wants to forgive you, too. He wants to give you eternal life, and all you have to do is ask Him. I asked Him, then, and He forgave me. Okay, oh, this is wonderful. Oh, that must be the guy here to get the package. What package? Oh, yeah, what do you mean? The FBI wanted me to send back the video game to them, so they said somebody would come to get it. Oh, package is sent? Yes, sir. All right, I'll need your signature then. No thumb scan? Thumb scan? We don't do those. Is everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. All right, well, you have a nice day. You too.
Wait. Oh, you'll have time to read this where you're going. What's this? It's the key. The what? The key to unlocking eternal life.